Then I will share the slides and um, we'll begin. So the talk today is about analyzing IIoT data with PLC4X and stream pipes. So um, the whole story started last year at the ApacheCon in Las Vegas, where we first met. And there in the hack session, we integrated the first running example of integrating um, PLC4X here as an adapter into stream pipes. And we also had our first running example, uh, running example there. Um, so who are we? It's me, I'm Philip. Um, I work as a researcher um, at a research institute in Karlsruhe. And this is a joint talk with Chris. So maybe you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, hi. Um, yeah, my name is Chris. Uh, I uh, work as an industrial IoT consultant at uh, CodeCentric. Uh, yeah, and I love everything that has an IoT in it, if it's IIoT or just IoT, but everything, as soon as it's hardware, I love it. Okay, thank you. Then I'll continue. So the talk, we will start with a short motivation. Then we will introduce briefly the two projects. Maybe we can shorten this part a bit because we lost some time in the beginning. Um, and if you're interested, just um, write us. We are also available for the next uh, couple of days. Um, then after the introduction, there will be a demo and then some more technical um, information about StreamPipes Connect, so how you can connect new data sources with StreamPipes, and in the end, also some current work that we are working on. So the motivation behind all this is that in the IIoT um, or Factory 4.0, we have a lot of different data streams. So for example, we have the robot operating system, ROS or MQDT or Modbus, and we have all these different kind of data sources which we want to harmonize. So the normal solution would be for us developers to develop custom solutions for the individual standards and protocols. Um, but there's still one problem. Low-level PLCs are often not very well supported. So, and that's where PLC4X comes in. So PLC4X gives you a really nice API um, where you can use your high-level programming language and get data out of the machines directly. Um, with PLC4X and all the other solutions, you still have to implement them. And that's what the idea of the StreamPipes Connect library is for, that users with a little or no programming knowledge are also able to connect those data sources and have a unified workflow to connect them and process the data. So next, um, the two uh, the introductions of the two projects. So maybe, Chris, you can say a couple of words about PLT points. Yeah, well, everybody who knows me knows I rather spend too many words. Uh, I'll, I'll just make it short. Uh, I think uh, the last ApacheCon, we all got one of these swag things to charge our phones. It was sort of like a universal adapter to sort of like charge any phone with any source of the USB. Uh, so that's actually what PLC4X is sort of about. It's sort of like having one API on the one side and a whole shitload of uh, different uh, APIs on the other side. So. We implement uh, all sorts of drivers uh, to communicate directly with industrial hardware. Um, and um, we use that and make it possible to really, really easily access data. Um, uh, yeah, so the unified, uh, the, the, the shared API is sort of the unique thing uh, with Apache PLC4X. Um, we also bring a whole variety of uh, different uh, integration modules uh, to integrate it into other Apache uh, products. We even have one uh, stream pipes adapter in our sandbox, but the stream pipes folks are doing a much better job in uh, having a plc adapter set up there and theirs. Uh, so that's why I'm here today. Um, currently, uh, everything we do is generally available in Java. I'm currently working hard on implementing that in C. And there is a big team currently working on porting that to Python. So that was the short version. <laughs> And then I will also give you a brief um, overview of stream pipes. So maybe some of you already saw the awesome talk um, of Patrick, which was right before ours. 
Um, and he also explained the uh, individual details um, more. So if you're interested, go out and check out his talk. So in the beginning, we have several data sources and connectors. With them, we are able to connect to various um, different protocols and formats like Kafka, MQDT, and also um, PLCs over PLC4X. Then we have uh, um, an algorithm toolbox, which contains different analytical algorithms. So they can be simple ones like filters, but can also be more like complex ones or time series analytics. Um, and also machine learning components can be wrapped in such um, processors and they can run standalone or also run distributed in, for example, a Flink cluster. Then um, for the deployment, we support various um, options. So you can run it either on um, a computer or on ARM PCs. And um, we also have Linux, OS X, and Windows support. And there's also um, a Helm chart for Kubernetes deployment. So the overall architecture looks like usually we have machines, which are our data sources. Then we have our um, adapter library with the various um, data connectors. And those harmonize data onto a um, unified message bus. From this message bus, we have several microservices, which get the data from this, analyze it, and users interact with this um, system over the pipeline management through the web UI. But now we will go directly into a demo. Um, so hopefully it will work. Um, here we have um, a sample factory, which is located in Chris's office. So it should be right next to him. And here we have um, a bigger um, factory with several stations. And we will focus on the sorting machine, which is on the top left corner and is controlled by this S7 PLC. So I will directly switch to stream pipes. Um, and we already connected it. So we have a running pipeline, if I go here, um, where we get the images from an IP camera hanging above the factory and um, projecting it into our live dashboard. And if I go to our live dashboard, we should get a live image from Chris's office. And maybe you can hold your hand into the screen. So. And in a first step, um, we want to connect our PLC. So therefore, we have um, StreamPipes Connect. And here we have those different adapters. And if I scroll down, you will also see um, a specific adapter for PLC4X. So we can select this one. Then we have to provide the IP address of um, the PLC. and also the polling interval. And we have to define which registers we want to read. So we can do this manually by entering um, the registers, but we can also export a CSV or Excel file from the TR portal and directly import it into StreamPipe so you don't have to manually configure the adapter. So that's what I provided. So here we have a CSV file, which you can upload here in StreamPipes. And if I click on Next, the system already um, generates the event schema for us. And we can also edit this schema here. In this case, we just want to add a timestamp. And here you can see we have a color sensor and several um, uh, booleans. Also, if you go on edit, you can see the data type and can also add some additional information here. If you click on next, we, you can give the adapter a name and start it. And this takes a few seconds till the adapter um, is running. So currently, the adapter is running on my local machine and is connecting to the PLC, which is located in Chris's office. And here you can see um, the data, which is coming in, the live data. And if we now go to the pipeline editor, where users can model those execution pipelines, you can see we have a new um, adapter. And also, you can see the values here. And now we can use our algorithm toolbox to analyze this data. But first of all, I will switch um, to another view. We also have an asset dashboard, which you can use to cre create those um, asset views. And if I open this dashboard, there you can upload um, an image. And then you should see the live data, which is currently not coming. One second. Um, 
okay, maybe we have a VPN problem. But, um, so, okay, the data is not coming anymore. Um, so I'll continue. So usually you should see um, like the live data coming in, but somehow the VPN probably is broken. So I will continue with the demo. Um, so one problem that uh, Chris had was that um, the sorting of the machine didn't always work. So he was implementing the solution during the night and he was setting all the default parameters. But on the next day when he showed it to someone, the um, sorting just didn't work. And now to figure out what the problem is, we want to store this data for offline analytics. So you can use the adapter and store it in a data lake or in internal um, database for stream pipes and give it a name and start the pipeline. So now the pipeline um, is started and is sending data directly into our data lake. And if we go here, you can create such data views and look at this data here. And now we will see the live data. And Chris, if you go back to um, the factory, and maybe you can add some of the blocks into the machine. So now I'm back at the live dashboard and Chris will enter several of the colored blocks into the machine, as you can see here, and the machine will start sorting them. So the first was a white one, then there was a red one, or is it blue? Yeah, it was a blue one and now also a red one. And if we go back to the data explorer, we can now have a look at the values of our light sensor. So I make it a bit bigger. And here we can see that um, the light is constant. And here we have the value, for example, for the white, um, for the white block. And if I go back to the live dashboard, Chris, can you use your lighting and um, yeah, that we see that the value change when there's too much light? And now it's putting with um, a spotlight onto the sensor. And here you can see that it has a big impact on the value. And now he's adding um, a few of the chips again. And if I go back to the data explorer, we can here have a look at the data. And here you can see this was with no light. And so a developer can use this view to look at the data and also see how this is evolving and then go back to the PLC program and configure the parameters accordingly. So this was one use case which we used before the talk to configure um, the a factory flow. Um, additionally, we can also analyze the data. So again, if I take the PLC data, we could, for example, count how many um, of the um, red chips which we are, we are producing. So in the data, we just have the Booleans and the light sensor. And we can use just a simple Boolean counter, which is included here in, um, did you say something, Chris? No, uh, my Mac just died again. Uh, and uh, I just had a spare one standing next to it. So I had to log in with that. Okay. So I will continue. And so we can connect the, um, our PLC to this component. And then we can um, see uh, we can configure it. So um, if the value goes from false to true, um, we want to count. And here we have the different Boolean values. And this is, for example, for the white one. And then I can select it and store it. And in the end, we could store this um, value into a database, for example, here in IoTDB. Um, or we can also, for the demo, um, print it on our live dashboard. And here we have a white counter. Or counter. So, and save it. Then I start the pipeline again. And then we can create a visualization for this counter. We go back to the live dashboard. And now we edit it and add a new visualization for our counter, um, a single value. 
and we select the counter field from our event. And now if you add a white, uh, white clock into the machine. Should I? Yeah, please. Okay. So, oh, just saw the white one went to the wrong one. Ah, it sorted into the red one. Sorry. <laughs> just put it manually into the other field. So it's in the white one. Okay. Now we, the counter should have increased, but maybe we have a data problem again. So take it out and in again, maybe it takes a bit. Okay. Um, okay, but yeah, usually so with those processes, you can also implement those simple rules and create additional KPIs or information um, about your data. What you can also do is calculate um, processing times, for example, from this basic values you get from um, you get from uh, the PLCs. So going back to my slides. I will um, briefly explain how um, the adapters work. So the conceptual model behind our adapters is that we support both data streams and data sets. And we um, have generic adapters and um, generic adapters have a specific protocol and also a specific format. For example, on MQDT or Kafka, um, you can have different kind of data formats, for example, JSON or Thrift. Um, additionally to that, we also have specific adapters, um, which use software libraries like PLC4X and give users this guided process to, um, to enter new data sources. And here, for example, we have OPC UA or also PLC4X, and you can also add um, other APIs like, for example, Slack. Um, now we want to focus on an adapter that is using PLC4X and connects um, S7s. Um, on the left, you can see a machine with a PLC attached to it um, and its IP and the node which we want to read. And on the right, um, we have an adapter instance. So adapters always have the same shape. So in the beginning, they have the actual adapter connecting to the physical asset we want to connect to. Then we can use several transformation rules, like for example, change the unit or add timestamps or add the event schema and then we send it on a harmonized transport layer. And if you want to um, implement a new adapter for screen pipes, there's a simple interface with several uh, methods that you have to implement. First of all, you need to uh, implement a declare model uh, method. Um, Patrick um, introduced in his talk in more detail about the screen pipes um, SDK and the different functionalities. Um, basically, what you do here is you provide um, the input parameters um, which are required from a user and also configure how the data looks like that is produced by this adapter. In the um, get schema method, we get some example data and provide the actual event schema to the user, which can then be um, edited. And then we also have a method to start and stop the adapters. Once we um, connect or start connecting uh, the PLC, a user has to provide several configurations. Like you saw before in the demo, we have to enter the, enter the IP and also the polling interval and also the nodes which we want to read. So in this case, um, we have the node address, we provide a human readable name with temperature and also the data type. This is what is configured by the user. On the bottom left, you can see our register in the PLC which currently has a 50, a value 50 um, for the temperature. Next, we want to, um, and what we do is we connect to the PLC and we get um, a, a processable event um, within our programming language. In this case, we have um, a map with temperature and the value of the temperature. Then we have several transformation rules which are directly integrated in the adapter and are derived from the user interaction. So you saw I added, for example, a timestamp, but I can also um, change the unit of the event or also the event schema or also reduce the event frequency, for example. If the frequency is too high, you can directly reduce it. 
and then the transformation rules are derived which are automatically applied on our event. In our case, um, we have the temperature event, then we transform the unit from Fahrenheit to degrees Celsius and um, add at the current timestamp. In the last step, um, it is forwarded to the internal transport layer. In this case, um, the system is configured to use Kafka and JSON, and also the host and the topic are provided here by the StreamPipe system. So the user doesn't have to configure that manually. Um, this data is then sent onto Kafka and can then be used in um, the graphical uh, degree. Um, next, I want to show you uh, one final demo where I have um, uh, an acceleration sensor, this XDK, and we want to use machine learning algorithm to detect whether um, this sensor is shaken or not. So this will illustrate how also more advanced algorithms can be used. Um, to realize this use case, we gathered some sample data and labeled it and trained a machine learning model, which is now applied on the data. So I switch back to stream pipes. And in the first step, we have to connect our data source. So I go back to stream pipes connect. And th in this case, the data is um, streaming over Kafka. And I um, configure the Kafka cluster and the port. Now we're getting um, the topics from our the Kafka cluster. So a user can select which topic to read from. In this case, we want to read the acceleration sensor and click on next. Then we have to define the format. So we don't know what kind of data is coming in. And in that case, it's JSON. Now we are um, getting some example data in the back and analyze it and present the event schema to the user. So we have the timestamp, X, Y, and Z values. If I click on edit, we can mark this um, property as, uh, or event property as a timestamp. And now we know this is a Unix timestamp and can use this for further processing. Additionally, we um, add, um, uh, we add a, a URL to the other topics. I have to copy it from another program. Second. My window is, the window is gone. Um, Okay, so I copied the URL. Um, so in the background, we're using semantic um, information. And in this case, we have a predefined URI um, that defines this value as acceleration um, X value. Currently, users have to provide this uh, manually, but for future releases, we also plan to automatically um, extract this information. Then we provide the same information for the Y and Z value. and save it. We could also add further description for other users later on, but for this demo, this is sufficient. Then we click on next and we can give it a name. So XDK for sensor name. And now the adapter is generated and we should see some live values in the meantime. So if we go back to um, the pipeline editor, we now have our sensor here. And via drag and drop, we can create this pipeline detecting the activity which we are performing. Here we have the parcel activity, which contains this machine learning model. And if we connect it, um, this component will directly be configured. And here you can see based on the semantic or the URI we entered um, during creation of the adapter, the system already knows which values to map. We could also add further information, like for example, a minimum frequency, which we need um, for this algorithm to work properly. Um, and now we know um, the results which are produced are semantically correct. For example, if we have a different sensor, not containing those X, Y, and Z values, or which just has, for example, a temperature value, the system would say to the user that this is incompatible and the component can't be used. And now we also want to visualize it in our dashboard. Therefore, we give it a name and save it and run the pipeline.
now the pipeline is started. And here we can also see more details on um, the run configuration. So you can also run the individual algorithms on different computers. So currently everything is running on my local machine, but the system um, is designed in microservices. So you can also distribute um, the individual running services. Then if I go to um, the live dashboard, we can add um, a new visualization here. And we select the activity and create it. And now we see it's normal. And if I take it in my hand and shake it, and I can also use it and throw it in the air, and then it also detects that it fell down. So I will go back to the slides. Okay, now we have um, one last slide about how to get involved into the project and also, um, yeah, so you can um, get involved as a user, for example. So all the projects are out there. You can just download it and have fun with it and especially provide us feedback over the mailing list um, for about your use case and how you're using Streampipes or PLC 4X. Um, then also you can um, test the PLC 4X drivers in uh, real life scenarios and also give feedback on that um, and also talk to us and spread the word about the projects. Um, as developers, um, we're always interested in um, the help of integration of more protocols into stream pipes, for example, from PLC for X, and also um, implement specific um, processors or data processors, which are um, specific to a certain domain, for example, and also implement more protocols for PLC for X and um, help to improve the existing um, projects. In the, on the last slide, um, yeah, I want to mentioned the other talks which are coming up in the IoT track. So the first one is about home automation with Chris tomorrow at um, eight uh, at 6.55. And then there's also a talk from Julian about Apache PLC for X. So check out those talks. They will also be very great and awesome and hopefully with no technical problems like this one. So in the end, yeah. yeah I'm I, I better set up my demo on my spare MacBook because uh, yeah, the primary one sort of really sucks today. <laughs> yeah, thanks for your time. And if you, I don't know if we have time for questions. Yeah, well, we have two minutes. So okay. if there are any questions, I think we should be able to type faster. Doki. Well, it looks like uh, there are no questions. Well, I think then we'll uh, move over to the other part of the day. <laughs> See ya. Bye. Thanks.